Hey guys, thanks for joining me once again for getting familiar with Click Geo Analytics. This is video three in the series. Uh, if you have been following this series, we've posted these in the Click community and on YouTube. Um, I will attach links in the description so you can navigate to get to the sample files. In the last two videos, we covered the Click Geo Analytics connector and the use of the geocoding operators. And then we also covered the closest operator to get the distance uh, of the video game stores from a uh, particular start point. In the last video, I made mention that I would create one on showing you how to customize the info bubbles. So when you hovered over a particular data point, you would get more information. So we're going to go through that right now. So I will include this app in the samples um, where the video is posted. If you're looking at this on YouTube, there will be a link to go to the Click community. Uh, if you're in the Click community discussion or document, you'll see the samples attached uh, at the bottom. So with this particular example, I've already added a column for sales data. Okay, so just to give you a quick example, I'm gonna just grab the sales figure, gonna add it, and then just bring it over to the table, and you can see I have some sales numbers in here. So the goal is to hover over a particular video game store and then see what the total sales are. But instead of using the regular info bubble, how about if we actually put a ClickSense chart in there or a report object or whatever you want to call it. So how would we do that? So let's start out with the basics. What I like about this example is that uh, I include a little APIs in here, our ClickSense JavaScript API, so you can see how that works. Now by all means, I'm not a uh, coder. Uh, or developer, but I am like a cut and paste programmer, if you will. So uh, if, as long as I know some of the basic concepts of JavaScript, CSS, HTML, uh, I could do exactly what I need in this example. So let's get started with just a simple example on showing you how to create a custom info bubble. So when I go into analysis mode and I hover over this particular layer, uh, which is related to here, showing me the different store locations. You can see as I hover, there's nothing on these particular info bubbles. So if I go to my appearance setting within this particular layer, okay, understanding I'm using click geoanalytics uh, extension map objects. I'm not using our native map object. So here we have the info bubble. You can see show info bubble. Now if I turn off auto, you can see it says add measure to use an expression. So in order to enable this, there needs to be a measure as part of this chart object. It's fairly simple. Uh, what you can do is you go to the ID where the reference to the geometry that makes the point, and you just copy that field, whatever that might be, and then you go to location and size. And the way this works is that inside this point layer uh, or bubble layer, you add a measure. And the first one you add will be the location, and the second one you add would be the size. So just to give you an example, if I pasted in address lookup geometry, I would use the only function, as you see here, and that will basically allow me to then enable the info bubble as custom, and now I can put in a custom expression. And now just to build on this uh, for the second parameter for size, if I add measure and I type in sales, and I say sum of sales, you're going to see the size of the boxes are relative to the sum of sales. So we can leave that like this for now if you wish. Um, if I go, you know, put a title, total sales, and then we go to the info bubble. It was on custom, so you're going to see it's not showing anything. If we go back to the appearance and we shut off custom, when we hover over this, you're going to see the sales figures for total sales. Okay, now that's the automatic way of using the info bubble. Let's say if I wanted to put like a chart object in here. So the way we would do that is within the same app. Now I'm going to delete the one that I was working on for the video. We're going to start fresh. I'm going to create a new sheet. And in the sheet, I'm going to choose my chart. Now to keep it simple, I'm just going to grab a, um, a KPI object. And I'm going to add my measure for sales. And then in here, I'm just going to give it a label total sales and format it with money, format the numbers, and then for the appearance, let's make it small and then adjust the size accordingly. So within the same app, within a different sheet, I created a simple chart object here called total sales. 
Now for this chart object, we want the value to display in relation to the store that we hover over. Okay, so when we hover over the store, we want the correct sales to display. So the way we're going to do that is using a little set analysis and a variable. So I'll go to my variables and we're going to create a new variable. And the convention I always use is a lowercase v and then, you know, the name of the dimension of the field I want to relate to. So in this case, I'm just going to use uh, capital I and uh, lowercase d. So vid. And that's all we're going to do right there. That just creates a very simple empty variable with no default value. Okay, we're going to go to our KPI object. And then within the data section where our sum of cells were, we're going to now add some set analysis. So what this is going to do is lock the sales value to a specific ID, okay, that we're eventually going to pass. So if you're familiar with set analysis, you'll know the conventions that I'm using here. Again, there are videos on this topic, but basically I'm going to restrict the sales value to just an ID. So the field name here is ID equal brackets, single text, and then the variable name, which is uh, denoted with a uh, dollar sign parentheses and then the actual um, convention, which was VID. Okay, so now when we click apply here, it's going to go down to zero. Okay. So now that we have our variable set and we have our chart using the set analysis to restrict it to an ID that will be passed when we hover over it, we can now put in the code snippet that's going to execute the API to pull in that chart and display it within a hover window. Okay, now I happen to have that code snippet right here in my notepad. Okay, and you're going to see in this code snippet, we're just using standard HTML and CSS and our JavaScript API. So this just creates a layer called diagram one. It sets the style in that layer, the position, and then the width of the box. In this case, you can see, or the width of the layer or the size, 300 pixels, height, 200 pixels. Then we do some inline script and you can see we're using the current app. So again, as I mentioned, I'm not versed in all of the API. Um, there is, you know, our full help that will go into that. But just for reference here, you can see that we're calling the app object here. So in the current app, grab the variable, here's the name of the variable, and then get the object and then the name of the object. Now you might ask, well, where do I get the name of that object? Okay, so some tips and tricks here. I'm gonna have to go to what's called our uh, developer hub. And if you're not familiar with the developer hub, this is a utility that helps you jumpstart working with uh, mashups and extensions and integration in our APIs. There's a tool called the single configurator. The single configurator allows you to reference any object inside of ClickSense app as a URL and apply parameters to that object. So the name of my app was Mike's Video Game Stores. And there's our KPI object. And I know that by the reference with the number one symbol. Okay, and there we go. When you select that object in the URL, you can see the associated parameters. Here's the app ID. And then right here, object equals and this is the little bit of text that we need right here. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back to my um, text editor and I'm just going to paste that right in there. Okay, and there's some additional parameters applied here, no selections, faults, etc. So I'm just going to now copy this code snippet, go to the layer where I want my info bubble, turn on my info bubble, and now I have my expression and then paste in the expression. So at this point, you can see we're really just putting in a text value that's going to resolve to HTML and then also execute any JavaScript. So using the single quotes and then inputting the text, and then also you can see the concatenation symbol here, and then the script along with the variable and the get object. I click apply. And now when I hover over one of these dots, it actually inserts the KPI object. So let's go into analysis mode so you can see that. So then I can zoom in and then I hover over a store and I could see the sales for that store. So it's just a quick video just to show you how to work with the info bubbles and how to create a custom chart object inside that info bubble. 
If you want to be alerted of more of these videos when they're published, just click the notification icon uh, on the bottom right next to this uh, video area over here and you'll be alerted when uh, videos like this are posted. Please let me know what you think. Leave comments or questions uh, where this video is posted, whether it's in YouTube or the Click community. And don't forget to check out these other great resources to learn more about Click Geo Analytics and ClickSense. Thanks for your time, guys. I'll see you on the next video.